Hi, I'm George. Welcome to Mad EV. Previously, we talked about the Tesla and the Michael EV in the Chinese EV evolution. But today, let's talk about something different but equally influential, the PHEV. Compared to the famous hybrid cars from Japan and Europe, what are the technical differences in Chinese plug-in hybrid market? And why do these differences exist? Allow me to break it down. If BEV is what most people buy when they want another car, well, PHEV can be a direct replacement for ICE car in much larger market. Yes, this is an iconic situation of the Chinese auto market over the past three years. From mid-2021, PHEV sales in China saw a huge rise. Over the following two years, the penetration rate rose to 10% from 1%. While BEV sales in China are experiencing a minor setback, with penetration rate hovering around 20%, it is a non-stop growth of plug-in that's driven the ICE car replacing process in China. There are two crucial players, one is BYD and the other is Li Auto. In the first half of this year, BYD accounted for 61% and Li Auto for 15% of all PHEV sold in China. They took more than three quarters of the Chinese PHEV market. The reason is simple. They were the first to make their PHEV the same price as ICE cars in the same class. This allowed consumers to see the real advantages of PHEV, such as higher fuel efficiency, stronger power, and less noise. Without a doubt, these are all what mainstream consumers value the most. For instance, the Toyota Corolla available in China has 1.5 liter three-cylinder engine and starts at 16,000 US dollar. However, it only has a manual AC, fabric seats, and a plastic steering wheel, and it even doesn't have a reverse reader or camera or intelligent infotainment. And now let's look at the BYD Chin Plus. With a plug-in system offering a WLTC electrical range of 46 km, it can provide superior power and fuel efficiency than the Corolla. Moreover, the Chin Plus comes with all the features the Corolla lacks, and the starting price for it is just under 14,000 US dollars. Well, which one would you choose? Many Chinese car segments are experiencing a similar trend. Perhaps are the top choices in these best-selling categories. People who care about the fuel efficiency prefer PHEVs. They are often found in popular larger and higher priced cars, especially in SUVs and MPVs. Models that were best sellers for decades in the ICE car area were never beaten by a better ICE car, but were beaten by a PHEV. That's what we call a dimension reduction strike. Meanwhile, government's policy treat BEV and the PHEV the same. Until the end of 2027, PHEV will still receive the purchase tax reduction as BEV. So it's a sensible transition for the traditional automakers that need to make lower emission cars. But simply converting a fuel guzzler into a plug-in doesn't guarantee a success in the market. Chinese consumers want a PHEV that can also be used as a BEV. For instance, in Europe, a PHEV with an electrical range for 50 or 80 km is enough for most people. But in China, only one third of the plug-in consumer would choose one with less than 100 km range. The most popular ones in the Chinese PHEV market has an all-electrical range between 100 to 200 km. In fact, in the past three years, the average electrical range of PHEV produced in China has increased from 83 to 114 km. What made them increase their range? That's because Chinese consumers want to feel like they are driving a BEV. In China, there are two mainstream technical solutions. One is P1 plus P3 dual model series parallel configuration, and the other is a range extended system. Both of them allow the car to run on battery for short to medium trips and gas for long trips. In other words, as long as you have a stable charging place with a 100 km range battery, your daily commute is basically covered. At this point, PHEV can offer the same experience as BEV. In comparison, the popular P2 hybrid architecture in Europe remains engine-centered. 
It can't charge batteries and drive the motor at the same time, providing a driving experience similar to ICE cars. And this is not what Chinese consumers want. What they want is very special. They are like, I want it to cost as much as an ICE car, and I want it to have an electrical range for 90% of my driving needs. I want it to offer the BEV driving experience, and I want it to be very fuel efficient when using the engine. And that's why in China, 93% of the p health sales come from the domestic brands. Foreign brands didn't expect the consumer to be this demanding, so they didn't make their cars competitive enough for the Chinese market. So today, any brand that wants to get a slice of the p health cake in China has to meet the market demand. We all know that p -Hell is a transition from ICE to BEV, but how long will it be? From our prediction is that the p -Hell sales will peak between 2025 to 2030, and from 2035, they will stop being mainstream, because by that time, BEV will outshine p -Hell in almost every way. Plus, the infrastructure will be more complete, and the consumer acceptance will be much higher. Simply put, the golden age of the P-Hub in China still has 10 years left, which is a crucial period for any car makers that already has a deep ice car route. And of course, if they want a smooth transition in China, building P-Hub is a must, and it must be done right.